Hello, welcome back to tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at whether it's week to 10 days in today's video. This evening, we're going to have our fourth update for Christmas. That'll be with you around 7 o'clock this evening on the Christmas updates page. This first video is going to deal with whether for the next week to 10 days. Got quite a lot of uncertainty, uh, actually, at the moment. Uh, so, we're going to get a cold snap over the weekend. Start of next week is going to be quite cold. But beyond that, actually... There is a huge amount of uncertainty for next week's weather, and I'll show you the discrepancy between the GFS and the ECDF for next week uh, in a moment. But we're only a few days away from this, and uh, we are seeing model um, sort of reliability plunging a little bit just at the moment. So I'll treat you for everything that's going on in a second. Before you go on with that, just to say that Chris Shop is open. So if you've, got, if you've got any Chris Shop to do at Amazon between now and Chris, just click the green button that says uh, Chris Shop. It'll take you through to our Chris Shop page. And then from there, the key to it all is to go through the Amazon banners, go straight to Amazon, do Chris Shopping as normal because you've gone from Gazovis to Amazon means that we get a revenue fee on the things that you are buying. And a big thank you to everybody for doing that. Got loads of time to get your Christmas presents in, of course. Um, we'll be running this right way up to Christmas, so we've got plenty of time to do that. But um, it's there for you. It's an option if you've got any shopping to do at Amazon. Do it for you guys. And we will get the Remy fee on things that you are buying. Thanks to everybody for doing that. Right, we'll begin by having a look at the Arctic and North Atlantic Oscillation. So the black line here tells where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. Red lines at the end where the GF Assemble is forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. Remember, this is just an index that's reflecting the state of the Axia Open North Pole. It's not driving anything. just tells you what the atmosphere is doing. So we can see from the black line here that we are currently in positive uh, territory with the Arctic Oscillation. However, it has as has been the case over the past few days, GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to potentially go very negative into the second half of November dates are just here. Now, when you have a negative North Atlantic Oscillation and Arctic Oscillation, it tells you that uh, you'll tend to have high pressure up over North Pole. You'll tend to be reducing the westerlies across the Atlantic and uh, sort of um, getting rid of the low pressure around the uh, Iceland area and uh, also getting rid of it around the Azores. And generally, negative Arctic and North Atlantic Oscillation conditions are a indicator that we might get cold. So we have got the Arctic Oscillation being forecast by Jefferson Ensembles to go negative here into the second half of uh, November, quite substantially and significantly so. The same is true for the North Atlantic Oscillation as well. Again, we're in positive territory at the moment with the LAO, but the Jeff Stumble's forecasting the NAO to dip down into negative territory in the second half of November, perhaps quite significantly and substantially uh, so. Now, bear in mind, as with any model output, there is unreliability the further out you go. So, although, yes, we've got pretty good agreement here between the GFS ensembles for both the AO and the NAO to be going negative, it's not a guarantee that that is what is actually going to happen, because it is all based on extended range and unreliable output and data. So, it's just the way the model is trending at the moment within its ensemble suites, doesn't necessarily guarantee that is what's going to happen. we will have to keep an eye and uh, see how that progresses. And there is, I think there is doubt about the extended range because we've got so much uncertainty within a relatively short time uh, scale, i.e. next week. So this is the ecm to uf 500 millibar height anomaly from the PSU, Penn State University uh, website. So we've got the ECDF here on the top. The GFS is on the bottom. We'll have a look at that in a moment. 500 millibar, 75 feet is an area in the absolute high pressure, low pressure. The mid ground pipe jet stream running above. Red extrapolates to high pressure, blue to low pressure. Look what the ECM to UF is. It's got a big blocking feature here over the top of the pole. So a vast area of high pressure. Moving across the pole, that is a substantial uh, blocking feature. Now, for us, we are f we are finding ourselves under this ridge here across the UK and western parts of Europe. So, we've got an area of above average heights, area of high pressure sitting across the uh, northwest and central and northern part of Europe. Now, compare that to the GFS and look at the difference between the two models. So they both have the blocking feature. That uh, blocking feature 
is there uh, over the pole. We've got those red colours extending right way into the pole. So uh, a really decent block. But for us, look how different the GFS is compared to the ECM. Yeah, because where the ECM at uh, day 7 to 10 is placing that ridge across northwestern Europe, um, it's totally opposite with the GFS. We are placing a really deep trough here across the northwest of Europe and bringing a very strong jet stream through the Atlantic and into the UK and Europe as well. Really quite um, unusual to see the models looking so different there. The UK with the ECDF is under a ridge. The UK with the GFS is under a very deep trough of low pressure. So obviously there's a very... A uh, very high amount of uncertainty for this sort of five to ten day time frame, which is starting from around the middle of next week and extending on into uh, the rest of uh, next week and going up to day ten. I think this is all a result. This uncertainty is all a result of this blocking feature. When you get this level of high pressure over the Arctic, when you get this level of blocking. But the models are forecasting, the GFS has it, and the ECWF has it as well, albeit in a slightly different position. But essentially, they're going for a very large blocking feature to be centering more or less over top of the pole. And when you get this kind of extensive blocking feature, because it's very unusual to get that, uh, the models will struggle in terms of everything else that's going on, if you see what I mean. So uh, they're trying to work out where that block is going to be sitting, and then they're trying to work out, through thousands of calculations, um, trying to work out exactly what the impacts of this blocking feature are going to be. So that explains, I think, the uncertainty that we are seeing here uh, within the model output as we're going into the uh, sort of five to ten day time frame. What we can say is that it does look highly likely that some sort of blocking feature is going to occur. So this chart here, the Arctic Constellation uh, forecast, which goes down uh, substantially into negative territory, and that tells us that we've got the blocking feature that we are seeing both within the GFS and the ECDF. That is quite like that, but I think the Arctic Constellation will be trending much, much more substantially negative next week. It just depends on what the impacts for us of that are going to be. These are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average. So we're going to have this cold snap over weekend. We're definitely getting that. Again, the northerly winds uh, over weekend going to bring frost and risk of winter showers to the north. Early next week, we uh, start to see temperature staging, a bit of a recovery for a couple of days. And then generally, the trend is still to go downwards. And actually, there are some or some members that are still going really quite cold into the second half of uh, November. They are cold outliers, but they are there. Also, signs of a very unsettled spell could be about to emerge. So we've got an active cold front moving down Friday and into Saturday associated with this drop in the temperature. Then drier Sunday into Monday. But after that, through next week, the GFS ensembles are trending increasingly unsettled. And we have got some very big rainfall spikes appearing there into uh, the second half of uh, next week. Some uh, really quite big precipitation spikes indeed, indicating what could be a very wet spell potentially setting up through the second half of next week. But we know that the ECWF is not going for that unsettled spell in the second half of next week. Actually, it's going for high pressure. Temperature anomalies are very close to average now for the first, for, um, the first day of the 9th of November through to Friday the 17th of November. Uh, England and Wales coming out ever so slightly uh, mild of an average. Scotland coming out and Northern Ireland coming out ever so slightly cold on average. is not a big deviation uh, either way. In terms of precipitation uh, anomalies, we're looking like this. So very close to average. Again, a little bit wetter than average from the 9th to 17th of November in the south. Potentially a little bit drier than average, perhaps surprisingly, in the north east. But again, not a big deviation either way. Temperatures and precipitation looking very close to average in the week ahead. This is how the GFS is looking, men, on uh, Sunday. So we've got this northerly wind pushing down. That's um, locked in now. We're going to get this northerly over the weekend. It's going to get cold again. It's going to be night frost. It's going to be winter showers in the north. High pressure collapses over the country to Monday. That is um, straightforward as well. 
So really beyond that, from Tuesday onwards, they've got uncertainty creeping in. By Tuesday, the GFS is already starting to flatten off this ridge and begin to move low pressure in from off the Atlantic. That low pressure is deepening through the middle of next week. So this south is looking by Thursday, a week away. We've got quite a deep area of low pressure across Scotland bring wet and windy conditions in from off the Atlantic. And then things turn more unsettled into the end of next week. This is Friday the 17th of November. But we've got a deep area of low pressure, potentially bring gale force winds and bouts of heavy rain on uh, Friday uh, next week. Very unsettled conditions maintain us through the weekend of the uh, 18th and the 19th of November. This is looking really unsettling deep with very low pressure across the country. Notice heights are still rising to our northwest and we're still seeing signs of high pressure around Greenland extending down into the North Atlantic. It all ties back to the block blocking feature that we know we've got up over the Arctic. Down a little bit beyond uh, day 10. So we do turn things cold again. We've got quite a decent uh, block setting up over Greenland. Their low pressure becoming centre by this point across um, uh, sort of the, the Baltic Sea area and the winds of course are coming in from a northerly direction. So eventually the GFS does still bring us these cold uh, northerly winds via Quite an impressive blocking feature that we see over Greenland and extending back up to the North Pole. The uh, Eastern UF looks like this. So again, we've got this normally wind for the weekend and into the start of next week. Ridge collapses. So up to Tuesday, everything is in agreement. It's beyond that that we've got the uncertainty. Let's go to Wednesday with the Eastern UF. And at this point, the GFS is starting to turn things more unsettled. But notice... ECM has much more of an influence from the ridge across England and Wales. That's probably keeping things mostly dry, but frosty through to the middle part of next week, maybe with fog as well. And then the second half of next week is when the split occurs between the two models. So this is Thursday, by which point the GFS is already starting to turn things wet and windy. ECDF just places this ridge over the country so it's dry, it's cold, away from northwest Scotland anyway. Uh, it's dry and cold, probably with frost and fog. And then go up to day 10, and look at this, the high pressure continues to be sitting around the UK. That's how we finish up on day 10. And we saw it on the height anomaly flow chart. We've got the area of high pressure sat there across the UK and much of northern and western uh, Europe, bringing in lots of dry weather. It would be cold, I think, under that high pressure. I suspect there'd be frost and fog by night, but it's such a big difference at day 10 from the ECMWF to uh, what the GFS is showing at day 10. Again, that's a GFS at day 10, very low pressure, totally, totally different with the ECMWF. The two things that the model, uh, the thing that the two models are in agreement about is that heights are rising by day 10 up over Greenland. There's blocking over Greenland, extending back to the North Pole. And I think that's what accounts for such disagreements between these two models at day 10. They're seeing me, this blocking feature setting up over Greenland and the Pole, and they're trying to calculate what the implications of that blocking feature are going to be. And that's what's causing all of the turmoil and the uncertainty. So... We just got to wait and see how this is all going to play out. We know what we can say for definite is that we're going to get the normally over weekend. It's going to have a cold weekend and in the start of next week, there'll be wintry shower potentially in the north and there could well be uh, some pretty harsh overnight frost at the start of next week as well. Beyond that, I think Tuesday is likely to be a drier day for many parts of the country and a little bit less cold. And then from Wednesday onwards next week, it really is in the realm of uh, what of speculation as to what happens. Will high pressure continue to sit around the country for the second half of next week, keeping things dry, frosty, and cold? Or will we go into quite a stormy and wet spell of weather? as the GFS wants to do. And then beyond that, it's a case of what happens with this block that is going to get going across Greenland, I think, next week. Will we see that block? Will we get a sustained cold pattern setting up into the final week to 10 days of November? Or 
Will we find ourselves not quite able to tap into the cold air from that block? I think it's all very, very interesting, so, uh, as it always is when you get these uh, blocking features got uh, a lot of unreliability with the models and we're just going to wait and see how it all plays out we'll be keeping you posted over the next few days of course but uh, that's it for now for today's first video come back this evening for the fourth Christmas update bit of fun we'll see what CFS V2 is forecasting tonight for Christmas that's all for now thanks for watching